Welcome to the shooting show. Uh, it's been quite a while since uh, I've been in the hide, um, what with work and some conditions. Um, but uh, I've just been watching this little last little bit here. We've got a clump of trees. It's one of my favourite clumps really on the place. Um, shot a lot of pigeons out here in the past. Uh, they not, don't necessarily have to be sort of feeding on here, but it's one of those clumps of trees. If they're going out to their feeding fields behind us, um, you know, they sometimes pass here. So, um, and I'm just doing an article in the Sporting Gun um, about sort of like three of my favourite spots on the place. Uh, and this is certainly one of them. So uh, we've just come up here. Uh, we've got a hide out. Uh, I'm just going to put some decoys out and um, we'll just see what, uh, what the day brings. Just that, but 20 yards just too far out there, but it came up, Prince was right, it came up and come round, just like to get a bit more movement in there, just to bring them that little bit closer. Um, we might get one or two, hopefully, fingers crossed. Oh yeah. There's a pigeon in all. There, Richard. Look. Think that bouncer helped? Well, I think so because it that just sort of like peeled off, come in. But uh, so yeah, I think it did. That's that little bit of movement in the hide, which with uh, you know I'm starting off with plastic decoys because I haven't got any, so. Um, a little bit of movement in the hide, in the decoy pattern. I think that, that's what we need now. So every time I shoot a, a real pigeon, I'll bring a plastic one in. So eventually we'll have a, you know, the pattern will be just uh, real birds. I think that might be, is that a pigeon or a blue rock? That's a blue rock, but never mind. That was, that was a blue rock, but, or a rock dove or stock dove or bluey or whatever it is. Um, but it's not a shootable bird, put it that way. Oh my. Oh, 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 look out, look out, look out. Look okay. out. Um, obviously, you know, we all know that the best decoys are, uh, are real birds, 
but you know as good as they're as good as they get really the, you know they're in force of decoys always got a bag of them so if I haven't got any um, I can always start off with them get the pattern going and then I just personally like to just bring them in so I've just got real pigeons out there at the end of it then Well, just putting a little bit of a back net really because the sun's come out. Um, I just feel that we might get creating a silhouette. Right. I'm just literally. I'm going to put a net across the back there, the back of us. Two um. uh. more there. cartridges you are on today? We are on Ely Pigeon Select, 30 gram fibre wad, doing the business. Yeah, he's definitely coming in. Not that one, this one. That one there, that, that one here. Well, uh, we've been here now a couple of hours, uh, very slow to start with, I must say. Um, we've seen a few, you know, the odd one or two pigeons. We've got, had one or two come close and have a shot. We've got a bit of a pattern out with birds just gone by us, um, like this one here. Um, um, it's just gone over the top of us there. Um, and we were sort of like, it was that situation where we were, you know, I was thinking, you know, is it worth sort of staying here? Um, but then it's, it just feels like someone's flicked a switch, We've got a few pigeons coming about, just shot half a dozen more, there's a few there, so we're going to give it another hour uh, and see what, uh, what it brings. I got him second barrel through the trees. Not quite sure how, but he's down. So, another one.
details about that. Well, they're just, uh, just, oh, there's another one there. Well, we're just having a little bit of a spell here. You know, all of a sudden it's, it's uh, things have livened up and, you know, we've got pigeons coming over the road. They're coming there real low now with the wind and you just lose sight of them and then next thing you know, woof, they're there. So, but we just had three in about three minutes. So we'll definitely give it another whirl, see how we go on. So your favourite spot's delivering again? Well, it's uh, you sort of begin to see why it's a favourite spot. You know, it was uh, very slow this morning, but the last ten minutes probably doubled the bag easily. So another one there looks swinging around. I bet you never got that one on, did you? Did you? <laughs> Should have had a shot. I was hoping that someone was going to come in a bit more, but yeah, what's this one doing? Yeah, Richard, Richard.
Well, uh, I think that's going to be it, really. I, uh, looking at the time now, it's uh, um, by the time we pack up everything here and get back to the house and sort things out, I've then got to go jump on the quad bike and go and feed. So, as much as I'd like to stop here for another half hour, um, we're going to c call it quits and um, see what we've got. But from, I mean, literally in the last hour, uh, it's gone from like having about seven or eight decoys. We must have 70 or 80 plus now, and it just literally happened in, in one hour. So um, we'll call it a day, uh, finish it off and see what we've got. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Go get back. Good luck. Well, what can I say about today? Um, really is one of those day of two halves. Uh, we got here this morning about 11 o'clock. Uh, we was doing an article for the Sporting Gun magazine about favourite spots and I was sort of like relaying how this is my favourite spot, one of my favourite spots and how the pigeons come, well, that didn't materialise. Uh, and we, we, it was about quarter past one, and we sort of like looked at, I looked at Richard and he looked at me and we had a little chat and we said, well, look, we'll give it till two o'clock. Uh, if nothing else happens, we'll pack up. So half past one, one come in, another one come in, a bang, bang, and bang, and then three or four, four, I don't know, so, we put another shot cam on the on the, uh, the the gun, and carried on. Well, from about quarter to two to quarter to three, it was just absolutely non-stop. Um, it's a long time, long time on here now since I've had pigeons actually decoy like that and come in like that consistently, you know, continuously, um, and. The only reason we paid, it did start to ease up a little bit around about the three o'clock mark and which I've got to go and, and get on the quad bike and go and feed. So uh, that sort of gave me a reason to pack up. Um, but it's been a, it really has been an unforgettable day. One that we, we was going to pack up, held, held on to it, glad we didn't pack up. And when we did pack up, we've got over 90 birds in the bag. So all in all, a really good day. got a uh, little herd of hinds and calves and what looks like one spiker um, down the end of the field on some sugar beet. The wind's good, it's coming straight towards us from where the deer are. They're 540 metres away. Um, the only thing we can really do is just tuck into the wood on my left and just come down the edge of the wood and hope we can get close enough to get a shot if that spiker's sort of poor enough to take. The only problem is there might be red deer in the wood waiting to come out on the field. Um, so we'll just have to go steady and keep looking as we go. So we've got a, a fairly deep ditch that runs down the edge of the wood so we'll try and get down that as far as possible. Um, 
there's quite a few peacocks that are feral on the estate. They're moving back into the wood. So that might be another problem. They might flap out and spook the red deer, but I can only see a hind and a calf now. The others have um, gone in towards the wood or what it looks like, or they might have just gone round the corner of the wood. We'll just get down a bit closer in case that spike comes back to these two that are still here. Keep down. They're all coming back this way. Can't hear us in the wind. Here he comes. I'll wait for a nice side on shot if we can get one. He's done. Cool. Good reaction. Hopefully you guys will see on the film, he uh, jumped up and kicked out with his back legs, that's a good heart lung shot. Um, it was just over 100 metres in the end. Um, when we were first on them it was about 160 metres but they just worked a little bit closer to us. So that's good, obviously we're, what, we're on the 19th of October so it's sort of coming up for the end of the red rut really. Um, so that's why that spike is just pushing those hinds around. Um, but he's also keeping an eye on the woods just in case a big stag comes out and pushes him off, obviously. So, good. Just after six o'clock. Be dark in about 20 minutes. So we'll get this one picked up. Back to the larder. So there's the shot on the way in. Um, halfway up the body, just on the back line of the shoulder. Uh, it's run like 30 metres or something. So, just a single spike spiker. So it's not a bad one, they're quite nice long spikes and quite thick at the bottom, but there's no, um, no additional points on this. And... Uh, there's quite a lot of spikers running about this year with extra points on the top and little brow tines at the bottom so those are obviously the ones to leave to try and get like those more multi-point animals uh, or antlers going. So yeah, good. Get the trailer, get this one sorted out. It's uh, quarter past six on the 20th of October, so we are actually supposed to film today. Um, but as you saw, this film started off with a, a little stalk yesterday evening, um, because unfortunately someone that will remain nameless, Emily, um, cocked up the dates a little bit um, and needed to come up a little bit earlier. So we uh, managed to get that stalk in yesterday evening just for we lost light um, and we went over to the big wood and uh, managed to get onto a, a red spiker. Uh, with a group of hinds and calves. Um, so this morning uh, we're going to go and look for red again in a different area. Um, it's quite mild, it's sort of towards the end of the rut so hopefully we'll see a lot of young stags um, and spikers moving around the hinds trying to get in. Now the older stags are sort of finishing off. Um, so yeah we've got rain coming in about nine so hopefully it'll hold off until we've you know been out and done our uh, stalk. So yeah just Get the gators on, 
finish my cup of tea, and then we'll crack on out there. spikers that are in front of us with this young stag. They've both got four points so they're probably ones to leave. Another spiker walked into the wood with just two spikes so I just want to wait and see if we get a, a look at that one again. But there's a bigger stag coming towards us pushing some hinds towards us. Um, obviously those two spikers with the young stag um, and then there was a hind and a bigger stag coming straight towards us and the hind sort of had clocked us and was standing there looking at us um, and they were all getting a little bit jumpy uh, so we've actually taken one of those four point spikers um, out of the two that were there I've taken the one that sort of got thinner, slightly weedier antlers there wasn't a lot in it really um, but at the end of the day, we've got to shoot something for the cull. Um, and at least we had two to choose from. 
ideally we'd have taken that one that walked over um, with just the two single spikes but um, he must have just walked straight in the wood uh, which is unusual because they don't usually come into the wood where the big stags are so um, wait as long as we could to see if he come back out but he obviously didn't so I don't think we've disturbed too much there's still some roaring in the distance and the big stag that was here with the high end he'll just move a bit down the wood and uh, carry on doing what he was doing so we'll just wait a few minutes I'm not sure if it fell over in the field or whether it jumped the fence and just fell over in the woods so we'll just give it five minutes um, and then we'll go and have a look hmm. Nice. So here we go, um, what can we say about this one? It was stood on a bit of a funny angle, so shot it front of the shoulder on the other side um, and the bullets come diagonally just into the back of the heart lung area. Um, don't know if you guys can see, there's a little lump there, that's actually the bullet um, just lodged in the skin just before it was going to come out. So we'll be able to cut that out of the larder and have a look at that. Um, yeah, it's quite a nice stag. Um, so this is the same age animal as the one we shot last night, but obviously this has got um, two extra points already in its first set of antlers. So in an ideal world, if that single spiked uh, spiker had come along, we'd have taken that one over this one. Um, so yeah, but like we said, we've got to shoot something. Um, we've got to get the the uh, the coal figures. Obviously, you've got to be right. Um, and there's you know a good number of these about anyway so it's not the end of the world um, and obviously as we were walking through there we just happened onto this nice uh, six point antler um, off a sort of fairly uh, early middle aged animal um, so you know from a single spike or you know three four pointer in their first year to something like this at probably six years old um, it's quite impressive and obviously different ones have more points than this um, obviously when these have finished growing they're just like a, a dead bone um, but when they're growing they're like a bone in our body so they've got that velvet covering on them um, which supplies blood to the antler so it can grow and at its height they're growing a centimeter a day so yeah pretty cool finds um, Obviously good that we got something shot, nice that we got the bullet we can have a look at as well uh, and we haven't disturbed too many of the other deer at the same time so we'll go back get the trailer get this one back to the larder and uh, yeah that'll be the morning. If you aren't a member of BASC it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you.